Good evening, I'm Dr. Macabre, and welcome to Eagle Land. Tonight we delve into the depths of terror. Yes, today we cover a horror-themed manga. We shall bear witness to horrifying creatures from beyond the veil, summoned forth into our realm by malevolent witches bent on the torture of humanity. I hope you are all ready to delve into this macabre world of death and insert what's going on. I told you you aren't scheduled until Halloween. Now get out of my chair. Oh, come on, then why are you doing the Halloween episode now? Because of reasons. Now get Sorry about that, folks. So yeah, witches. I had to cut off Dr. Macabre because he was giving you the wrong impression of this manga. Witches is not a horror manga. Sure, it features witches and spirit demons and conflict with the Vatican, but I would hesitate to call the stories horror. The second story is probably the closest to true horror. The rest of the stories have elements that may be horrifying, but are much more focused on telling interesting stories with good artwork. Witches has been classified as a seinen manga, but the seinen world is incredibly broad. Seinen as a genre not only includes the hyper-violent Gantz and Elfin Lied, but the comedic study of mental trauma, welcome to the NHK. Seinen acts as a sort of dumping ground for all the mangas that don't really fit into the four main categories, but have mature content in them. So you get a lot of seinen pieces that I would more accurately describe as art house. Which is exactly what uh, Witches is. It's an art piece. The author wanted to write interesting stories while showing you mind-blowing visuals. And while your mileage on the stories may vary, the artwork for this delivers. It's done in the pencil sketch style, which paradoxically gives it some of the worst art I have ever seen. When the author doesn't put in the effort, you get stuff like this. That doesn't even look like human faces. But when the artist is trying, well then you get stuff like this. Just... just look at it. How do you even describe this? Now class, I want you to get out your pencils. Today you will be drawing a symbolic representation of nature existing within the soul of man while at the same time being larger than him. I look forward to what you come up with. Well, let's get this review started already. I'm doing the chapters out of order, so we start with the fourth story, Thief of Songs. In this story, we follow a high school girl named Hinata, and right off the bat, she establishes her lovely nature by stealing the money for the school field trip so she and her cousin Yuji can go on a cruise. Hinata has lost all sense of her own life, to the point where she feels like a spectator in her own mind. But on the deck of the cruise ship, she meets a mysterious woman named Chitaru. Chitaru is an excitable woman who sees right through Hinata's emptiness and gives her advice on how to open herself up to the sensations of nature while on this cruise. Hinata quickly embraces the lessons and finally develops a sense of her own existence in this world. As Hinata and Chitaru grow closer, Chitaru says how much she likes Hinata's name and asks if she can use Hinata's name if she ever has a child. She is rather creepily insistent about this idea. <clears throat> FORESHADOWING! Chitaru also tells Hinata of a mysterious island where nature sings glorious songs and was the place of Chitaru's rebirth. If Hinata goes there, she will truly waken to life. But Chitaru also warns her not to take anything from the island back with her. Skipping ahead a bit, Hinata tries to talk to Yuji about her recent revelations and her plans to visit the island when the ship stops. He is more interested in listening to his headphones. What? What is it? Hinata departs the ship at the next port and makes her way to the island with the directions Chitaru gave her. What will she encounter on this island, and what will become of Chitaru's warning? Well, you're just gonna have to read to find out. That's right, this episode comes with the no spoilers tag. I really do hope that this review will get people to read this manga, so I'm just going to give the basic overview and let you find out the rest for yourself. With that said, let's move on to story three. 
The third story, Petra Genitalix, starts off with an astronaut attempting a record-breaking spacewalk when he is suddenly struck in the face by space debris. I'm going to skip most of what comes after that. We essentially get to meet our two main characters. Short version, Alicia is adopted and raised by the great witch Mira as a companion and apprentice. Jumping ahead in the story, we see that somehow the astronaut who ate a space rock has still got a pulse. Despite being hit in the face with a rock... in space. The doctors are utterly baffled as to how the man could still be alive, but they try to remove the rock anyway. But the moment the doctors remove the stone, the world is struck by an awful power that causes bizarre creatures to spring into life from all sorts of impossible places. How is some small space rock causing all this crazy stuff to happen? And why is the Vatican talking to Mira? Stop! That's far enough. Story 3 actually crams most of its plot into the last half, with the beginning devoted to establishing Mira and Alicia's relationship. That makes it nigh impossible for me to summarize without spoilers. No time to chat. Story 1, you're up! Story 1 is called Spindle, and takes place in near-present-day Turkey. We are first introduced to Shiral, as her mother teaches her how to weave. Then she suddenly weaves what is known as a message. Her grandmother tells her she should obey this message, which says to go to the capital immediately. What's going on in the capital? Well, it appears that a witch has got her sights set on the local bazaar and plans to murder all the men who keep order in the marketplace. And her cunning plan involves sending out a cursed fly. Wait, that can't be right. Let me, let me double check. Yeah, the script says fly. How is a fly going to help her? What's it going to do, poop in their food? Or draw a death curse in the air that causes five of the market leaders to drop dead all at once. Point to you, witch. That was very creative. Spindle is probably the witchiest of the four stories. I don't want to go into any more plot, but let me just say that this story has some really amazing artwork. Allow me to demonstrate. A subplot for Spindle is one of the sons of the market men trying to woo a girl he likes. She isn't really interested and tries to brush him off by saying she will go out with him if he learns magic. In hops spiteful witch with some nasty plot. When we eventually get back to him, he starts writing a declaration of his love in midair with his fingers. Actually, that's a pretty sweet trick, but I don't see... <laughs> Here. I'm alright. I'm alright. <sighs> Story 2 is called Karupa, and takes place in a South American jungle. Shaman Kumari has devoted her body to the forest spirit so that she may have the power to repel the foreign invaders who seek to destroy the forest. We get to see her illusion the evading troops into shooting each other. Nice. And very surreal. So who's sending in these troops and why? It's Mr. Pigface, who wants to clear out the forest for some evil villain-like reason. He is tired of losing troops, but isn't too keen on accepting foreign military aid. It's expensive, and he would rather not cut into his profit margin. <laughs> Only the finest aged hardwood goes into my beautiful furniture. He ends up sending in foreign military anyway, which is a problem since, as the shaman puts it, city men are resistant to the will of the spirits. They track down Shaman Kumari and shoot her in the head. But she isn't dead. Oh no, she has tricked them. The spirits are attracted to the smell of her blood, so getting shot gave her the opening she needed to curse the men. And the last we see of these poor souls, they are about to get munched on by some particularly mean spirits. Well, that was witches. What'd you think? Pretty creepy, right? Okay, so maybe it wasn't all that scary, especially for a Halloween episode. But it has masterful atmosphere and pacing. You get a very real sense of looming dread in these stories as events quickly spiral out of control. And the magic elements are never concretely explained, leaving their potential to your imagination. Your brain will always be better at scaring you than anything else. Witches may not be scary, but it's definitely surreal and creepy when it wants to be. I praise the art a lot because it deserves it, but these are some very well-written short stories. 
My quick little summaries cannot do justice to the level of characterization or deft handling of fantastical elements that this manga achieves. Igarashi Daisuke is the author. Though not a huge seller, his works have garnered all kinds of praise in the world of manga. Witches won him an excellence prize at the Japanese Media Arts Festival in 2004. If you love manga as an art, or are at all a fan of fantastical stories, you owe it to yourself to read this manga. I'm Pluto Burns, and this has been Eagle Land. Oh, and Happy Halloween.